Boker to more dim with some hot today's office of coffee sign, but the boss was a win for Hanukkah basis. Roll on the sumo at Sarva Shivya. We'll start from the coffee sign the top, but let's rather take a quick look at the Mishnah right before that at the end of Kufta sign of the days. We all know the story of no Slavcha that they were five girls and they had no brothers and uh, they they complained that they weren't going to have a share and therefore God gave them, God gave Moshe all the rules of Nahla based on their complaint. So they got the share of their father, right? If there's no sons, since there's no sons, they got the share of the father. But the mission says, they got three shares in Eretz Yisrael, Benachla. They got the share of their father, as we'll see, our Mishnah goes with the Shita that Eretz Yisrael was not divided among those who entered Eretz Yisrael, but rather those who left Mitzrayim based on the Psukim. So our Mishnah says he got three, what do we mean there? That the Nos, that Slavchad and his father Hefer both left Mitzrayim, but they both died in the Midbar. Not only did they leave Mitzrayim, but it was divided among, among those people, whether you hold it was divided among the people who left Eretz, left Mitzrayim or those who came into Eretz Yisrael, or both, as we'll see, a third Shita, it was given only to people between the ages of 20 and 60. So if they were minors under the age of 20, they didn't get anything. So therefore, the you no know, who were, Slavchad, who, who was a, of age when he left Mitzrayim, but he didn't make it to Eretz Yisrael. So he had a share in Eretz Yisrael. So one share, they got the share of their father. He was among those who left Mitzrayim. And they also got his share with Slavchad's brothers in the share of their grandfather. In other words, when they left Eretz, when they left Mitzrayim, Slavchad got a share and his brothers got a share, Slavchad's brothers. And Hefer, his father, got a share. They were all, let's say, between the age of 20 and 60. Okay, now, well, we, we learned before that in the pre uh, on uh, I guess we learned on Friday that if a if a son dies uh, if a if a man dies his son gets to share right if his if his um, if he dies and his son is already dead his son's children get that share get the share of their of their father get the share of the father even if it's a girl she gets the share of her father because her father was a a, a boy and therefore he, he gets he gets the arusha so. Uh, so therefore, like a, a basa ben and here's like ben. So again, let's just take a simple example. Let's say there are three brothers. A man died, left brothers one, two, and three. And uh, when he died, two and three were there, but one had already died, but he left a daughter or a daughter's daughter or a daughter's 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 daughter's, daughter's daughter, whatever it was, all the way down, they get the share of number one. So here too, Slavchad, not only got their father's share, but they also got the share of, of his father in Hefer's share. Hefer was, even though Slavchad, even if Slavchad uh, died before Hefer, he got, uh, he was entitled to a share. In other words, his children were entitled to the share of the grandfather. So they got one share because Slavchad left Eretz Yisrael. They got a second share because Hefer left, uh, left, left Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim, left Mitzrayim. Because Slavchad left Mitzrayim and Hefer left Mitzrayim. And also, and also, Slavchad was also Bechor. So he got a double share in, in his father Hefer's uh, uh, share. So therefore, Eretz, Eretz Israel, according to the Shita, was divided among those who left Mitzrayim. Not those who entered Israel, but those who left Mitzrayim. And therefore, as a Bechor, uh, since Lofa was a Bechor, he got a double share. He got a double share. That's how you do a Bechor. You take all the entire Yerushalayim, you split up among uh, among the number of brothers plus one, and therefore he got he got a double share. Slav got a double share. So they really inherited Slavchad's own share, Slavchad's simple share in his father's estate because his father Hefer also left Mitzrayim, and also because uh, Slavchad was before he got a double share. So they got three shares. They got a total of three shares in Eretz Yisrael based on their father Slavchad. That's how exciting this fits in. Now you might say. Wait a minute. A <clears throat> Bechor only gets a double share in what's there at the time of death, right? In Bechor, he only gets, and a Bechor not to Baroi to He doesn't, he only gets what's there, what's Muxik. What's Roy, what's potential that's going to come later on. For example, a man dies and left two children, a Bechor and a simple, and uh, another a boy, Reuben and Shimon. Reuben's a Bechor, Shimon's not. So Reuben gets a double share, right? But only what's there at the time of death. Let's say later on, 
uh, Yaakov's uh, grandfather, Avram, died and left them some more assets, doesn't get a double share in that, even though they inherit from Avram, right? If Avram, let's say Yitzchak uh, was dead and Yitzchak had no children, et cetera, et cetera, except for Yaakov, and Yaakov was dead, and now it goes to Reuben and Shimon, they share that equally. Reuben doesn't get a share. So that's the question. How could they get a double share? How could he get a double share in the in the estate of Hefer, meaning in Hefer's portion of Eretz Yisrael, when they left Egypt? But at the point, the point is, it was they didn't have it yet. How did he get a double share? The shares were assigned according to the people who left Mitzrayim, but he didn't have it yet. The answer is, as Rosh Brown points out, and we'll see in the Gemara, that even though Ain't a bechor no bechor the mosek. Eretz Yisrael was considered mosek already. That's the point. Don't be shamed. Bechor no bechor the mosek about Rosh Brown about twelve lines from down on the page. Eretz Yisrael mosek is Eliyahu. It was already considered mosek for the people left Mitzrayim because Hashem gave it to them as Yerusha at that point. Now we'll see the Gemara and Daf Kufi sign from the top of the page. So they stop. Tanan. Tanan command to Omar. Our Mishnah goes like the one who holds the Eretz Mitzrayim is Chalka Aris. We'll see. There's a three-way machlokus. Who was Eretz Yisrael divided up among? Amongst those who left Mitzrayim, even though they didn't come into Eretz Yisrael, all right, there were very few people who left Mitzrayim and came uh, over the age of twenty and made it to Eretz Yisrael, like you know Kalev, right, like all of Yeshua, but not too many. So it was a divide among those who left Mitzrayim, or was it divided among those who came into Eretz Yisrael? So we'll see. Tanakh Kaman Amish is always like the ones who go to Eretz Mitzrayim. This Chalkars. That's why after all, Chayfer didn't come into Eretz Yisrael. Neither did Slavchat. So how would they get a share? How what, what share were they talking about? Must be that we're talking about the shares of Slavchat and Chaifer when they left Mitzrayim. So our mission goes among the Mitzrayim. The time is Mishra Yoshi Omer, the Yosem Mitzrayim is Chalkar. So it was divided among those who left Mitzrayim. Shinemar, Lishemos Matos Avosam Yin Cholu. Pasik in the Midbar says that it was given according to the names of the tribes of their fathers. How is this such a proof that it was divided up among? Among the Otsim Mitzrayim and not among those the, the, who, who entered Eretz Israel. How was that such? It's not such so clear at this point. The Gemara Namad Beis will start, will explain why it's clear. Shinem Lashemos Matos Avos was divided among their fathers. They, like take take no Slavchad was divided among their fathers. Slavchad and the grandfather Chayper was divided among them. Elamani Mukayim. What about the pasuk right there that says Laela Techelik Aretz the Nachla? These people you should give to the to the uh, Aretz in to Eretz Yisrael as an inheritance. Mashma, these people who came into Eretz Yisrael. No, Le'ela Ka'ela means that to these people, like the people who left Mitzrayim, Lahotzi Asat Falim, to exclude, meaning that Le'ela Ka'ela could only give it among the people who were between the ages, over the age of 20, meaning they were to exclude the Tfalm. Tfalm means the minors, the children under the age of 20 wasn't given to them. Le'ela Ka'ela is just saying he's going on Give it to those people who were above the age of 20, because we mentioned over there about the different ages. He doesn't mean to say, Leila, these people who come into Eretz Yisrael, because the people who come into Eretz Yisrael don't get their own share. They don't get their own share. So if, let's say, a man uh, left Mitzrayim at the age of 18, and in the Midbar, he grew up and he had, he had children, and um, he didn't come into Eretz Yisrael. He died. There's no share for them. No share, because he wasn't 20 when they left Mitzrayim, so he was a minor then. He didn't get a share, and therefore his children have no share either. Okay, so what's going to happen with that? We'll see. Leila Kael the Otsi Asat Farm. But the Onus and Armias disagrees. I mean, Leboya Aretz and Shalak Aretz. No. Eretz Yisrael was divided up equally among all those who came into Eretz Yisrael. Came into Eretz Yisrael, you got a share. Shinamar Leil to Shalak Aretz. He takes these last Pasik, the last Pasik quoted in its simple form. Leil to Shalak divided up among these people, Menachla. So what do you do with that? That it says it's going according to their fathers, their fathers who left Mitzrayim. So listen to this carefully. This inheritance of Eretz Yisrael, given, physically given to the people who came into Eretz Yisrael, obviously the boy Haaretz, to the Yodzei Mitzrayim, obviously they were dead. They were all dead. They couldn't give it to them. But this Nachla is different than all other Nachlas in the world. All inheritance of the world, what it means, what does an inheritance mean? A man dies and his living children take it over. Not his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchildren. His heirs are whom? The people who survive his death. That's who gets it, right? That's who gets it. That's how Nachla normally works. The, the live people, they inherit from the dead. The Khan Mason Yorsham Chayim. Over here, the dead inherit the living. What do we mean by that? Listen carefully. 
We're going now with Rabbi Yonis and Shita, not Rabbi Yoshia. Not Rabbi Yoshia. Rabbi Yoshia says it was divided among the Osim Mitzrayim. Rabbi Yoshia, Rabbi Yonis says it, it was divided among the Boy Haaretz. So what does that mean? It, uh, the, the, that it goes according to their fathers, and here you say the fathers inherit the the, the living. Let me the Gemara. Rebbe, Rebbe gives an example, and then we'll we'll see from the example in Imshal what how we apply it here. Amar Rebbe, Imshal Chamash. I'll give you an example. Lamad over there. What's this comparable to? The Shneachin Kohanim. Let's say two priests, two two Achin Kohanim. Show you Beir. They were the Beir. They were in one city. Laechad Yesh Leben Echad. Let's call them number one and number two. Two Kohanim brothers. Number one has one child. Laechad Yesh Loshen Barim. And the number two has two children. So number one is one child, number two is two children, right? The whole Chalugon, they went to the granary to get their share of Truma, let's say. How many shares are they going to get? The one who has one son, okay? Let's say the fathers are dead now, their fathers are dead, and these kids are Kohanim. So one, the one who has, uh, the, the one who has one son, the, the single son, takes one share. The one who has two sons, either the kids take it themselves, or the father takes it on behalf of the children. But the point is, one Kohen brother has one child, one Kohen brother has two children. So how many shares do they get? Three. The the one guy, the, the single son gets one share, the two sons get two shares, one apiece, right? Very simple. Now, Umar Zira and eight Salavian. Now they take the three shares back to their fathers, whether the fathers are alive or not. And they split it up equally, meaning this. The ones who got the shares, right? They they walked away from the granary with three shares. The one son got one share, the, and the son of uh, the two sons of the other brother get two shares. That's three shares. Now they give all three shares back to their fathers, the two brothers, and they split it equally. So that each family winds up with one and a half shares. That's what happened over here too. That's the mushal. What's the name show here in our case of of the bar mitzvah? Listen carefully. The boy uh, Aris. The Yonas said. Yonasan says that there were. It was divided up among the families who came, among the people who came into Eretz Israel. So let's say you had, let's just take an example. Let's say there were two brothers. One brother had one child. One brother had 10 children, 10 children. How many of these children, how many, and the brothers died, but the, the, the fathers, the two brothers who were fathers died. So when they came into Eretz Israel, how many shares were they given? Let's take a simple example. I'm sorry. Take an example where one brother had one child, one brother had nine children. Numbers are easy enough to deal with fractions. One brother had one child. One brother had nine children. Total of 10 children came into Territ Israel. They each got a share. That's 10 shares, right? They got 10 shares. They got the shares, right? Now, those 10 shares revert back to the two brothers, the fathers of these children, two brothers, and they divide of the same family and the same tribe, and they divide it equally, and each family gets five shares. So now, when they actually live in Eretz Yisrael, the one who had one son, he gets five shares. And the one who had nine children, they have to split five shares. They only get five. They only get five. That's, <laughs> that's very good. That's not why they want to do it, but that's what the Pusik, says, says that's what the Pusik is telling them to do. Rebbe says it came into Eretz Yisrael. It says, the divide up among land. I, but it says also if the, if it goes back, it was given to the fathers. The the matas in the ones who left Mitzrayim was given to them. How was it given to them? It was given to the people who came into Eretz Yisrael. The answer was given to them based on the number of people that came in. At the, actually, let's say ten people came in, nine from one family and one from the other family, the other brother's family. Right? That one had one son, one had nine children. Ten people came into Eretz Yisrael. They got ten shares. Now the ten shares reverted back. To the dead people, their dead fathers who yeah. left Mitzrayim, and they split it equally. That's how he was. That's what Yonason is the Pusik. Yeah, That's the second ridiculous uh, uh, conclusion. That's right. You could go back back even further. No, 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 no. no. So, there's no further. They're all, the yeah. same, they're all family on the same shores. Yeah. So divide all six hundred. Yeah, it goes according to the tribes. It goes according to the tribes. Goes according to the tribes. Even if it's according to the okay. tribes, so you can go all the way back. Ain't to a Ain't a That's exactly what we're saying. You go back and divide it among the the, 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 the Oaks of Mitzrayim. The people who left Mitzrayim, it's divided up among them. It's exactly right. You, you they, The people came into Israel, they each took a share. Now these shares went back to the Yotze Mitzrayim, 
and it was divided them up among the families within the tribes. Each family get divided up the same way. Every family divided up the same way. Exactly right. That's exactly what he's saying. Shemar Allah's Omer, third sheet. He says, Omer, it was divided up among both. If you left Mitzrayim, if you left Mitzrayim, you got a share. And if you were 20, and if your kid came into Eretz Yisrael, he got another share if he was 20 when he came into Eretz Yisrael, right? If nobody was 20 when they left or when they came in, nobody gets anything. It was given to both. So you could wind up with two shares. So let's say there was one man, he was 20 years old, he left, and he had one child, came into Eretz Yisrael. The child came into Eretz Yisrael when he was 20. He gets a share for himself and he gets a share for his father for leaving Mitzrayim. To fulfill both psukim, one psuk, one pasuk is mashma shnei psukim shnei mikros el to fulfill these these two verses in the in the pasuk that one says l'shem as matzah of us according to the father, one says la'el chevgarts the mashma the people coming into Israel. Okay, so what's an example? Hayim yos mitzrayim no tochelko yos mitzrayim. If he was from the people who left Mitzrayim, he got one share that would presumably be a father. Hayim miboy aretz. He came into Israel, not the Chalko in Bayars. If in theory, and we, there were people like that, right? there were a few people like that who both left Mitzrayim at the age of 20, right? But they had to be exactly 20, and they came into if they if they left Mitzrayim at the age of 20, then they'd be over 60 when they came into Israel, right? They'd be Presumably dead. they'd be either dead or over 60 if they survived. So it would be probably pretty hard to they find. But yeah, they all they not, no, I mean Yeshua color. and I'm talking about Yeshua and Kalik. You and Shu and Kalik. If they were exactly 20, they could have gotten two shares, but we'll see they got other shares also. Okay, but the point is, is that if let's say a father left there, left Mitzrayim, he was over 20, got one share, and the son came in Terrence row, and he was over 20, he got another share. So he got two shares, his father's and his. Right? Mikan Umikan, Noto Chelko, uh Ken, uh, let's see. Uh, in Boyards, Mikan Mikan, no Tochelko. Okay. No Tochelko, Mikan Mikan. Okay, very good. So Mikan Mikan. In other words, if he was, if he just saying, like, just giving you every theoretical, theoretical possibility, if he were left at Shrine, we get a share with the Osim Shrine. If he came into Eretz Israel, you get a share from the people who came to Eretz Israel. Mikan Mikan, if he was both, no Tochelko, Mikan Mikan, meaning if, if at least he qualified for both, not necessarily. There may not have been any one person who got who got both shares, but if he qualified because of his father and because of him, he got a share for both. And so we have three sheetas here. Now our Mishnah clearly goes with the idea that uh, Bero Safad got three shares, right? Got three shares. If it would be, if it would be as we'll see, if it would be of those who came into Eretz Yisrael, well, neither Hefer nor Safad came into came to Eretz Yisrael, so they wouldn't have gotten anything. So it must be our mission speaking about the sheet that goes with the sheet of Rav Yoshia, who says that it was divided up among those who left Mitzrayim. Both Hefer and his sons, Slavchad among them, left Mitzrayim. So Slavchad had a double share in his father's, in his father, Hefer's, and his own share. So it was a total of three shares, and they all went to the Beno Slavchad. Now the Gemara says that the exceptions. We'll see the reason for the exceptions are brought down in later on. We'll see that tomorrow and the next day. Yoshua Bukale, not to Chelkom, the uh, uh, Miraglim, rather, I skipped the word. Miraglim, what about the Miraglim, who forfeited their share because of their bad activity? Yoshua Bukale, not to Chelkom. Yoshua Bukale got their share. So even if they weren't both 20 and 60, you know, and they left, it would be impossible if it was a full 40 years. Uh, then, they, but they, Yoshua and Bukale, and as they, for, they forfeited their share, the Yeshua and Kali because of their bad activity. Mislonanim, what about the complainers, the people mislonanim? The Adas Karach, these were also bad people. Loyal and they didn't get a hair, they, for, they forfeited their share of uh, Baaretz. And therefore, what about their children? Abonim Natlu, but their children got a share, Natlu Basfus Avi Avian. Let's say, okay, uh, you know, you didn't, you didn't punish the grandfather for the son's activity. So even though the Mislonanim and the Adas Karach, uh, we're not entitled to a share, right? They weren't entitled to a share. They forfeited their share. But their children got a share in the source of their grandparents. If their grandparents left Mitzrayim, or let's say the source of the father of their mother. Now, the father of their mother, who would, who would those shares normally go to? The sons, right? The sons, because they inherited them. But if there were no sons, uh, then uh, 
then, then it would revert, if there were no sons, it would go down to the daughter. So if their mother was a daughter of the grandfather, which she was, right, and she would get a share, they could get these, these grandchildren could get a share based on, on those things. My mash, now the Gemara, it goes back to the beginning. You said, Rav Yonason said, this sheet of our Mishnah, which goes like Rav Yonason, which says, that it was divided among those who left Mitzrayim, the Otse Mitzrayim. How do you see that in the Pasuk? My mash, the high Lishemos Matos Avosam. How do you see that Biosim is wrong? Maybe it's talking about the uh, Doma Lishvatim Kamale. Kamale is just telling us divide them among the tribes. We know that even though each individual family got a share, but it was went according to the tribes. Sometimes got in Gushdan, some got in Menasha, some got in Binyamin, wherever they got their share. Maybe he was talking about the Shemus Matas of Osim Michal. means that goes that the, each family will get according, it will get a share in their tribal area. Maybe that's what it means. My The answer is this is the answer. This is, it says in, the, in Shmos, when Hashem told Moshe, to take the people out of Mitzrayim and all the miracles, etc., that were performed, it says, I will give it to you. You are the Otsei Mitzrayim, the people who were in Mitzrayim who left. Right? I will give it to you as an inheritance Hashem. Yerusha Hilachem Me'avosechem. It's a Yerusha to you. To the new generation, Rabbi Sechem, and to, from your fathers, or the Otsim Israim come along. As Hashem told the Otsim Israim that I'm giving it to you as a Yerusha, a Yerusha from your fathers, and, entitled to because of your fathers, and that Hashem promised that from Yitzchak and Yaakov, Eretz Israel. So I'm giving it to you as a Yerusha. He told the Otsim Israim. So therefore, it was given to the Otsim Israim, not to the people who came into Eretz Israel. So Hashem is Matas Avosam, is speaking about the Otsim Israim. I, the Pusik says, Lael Techalik Esar, it's Menachat, sounds like talking to these people coming into Eretz Israel, you know, it just means no. Le'ela means that they have to be uh, 20 years old to exclude the young children. They give us a simon here, simon l'rav, tlav, tlav, yosef, ichbal, and ashu yachu, these are simon for the next uh, next members in the Gemara. Amalei or papal abayit. Bishlam aman dover now. So we have three shittas. Was it divided up among those who left Mitzrayim? Those who came into Eretz Israel, and then it was what, it reverted back. The idea that you didn't like, it reverted back to there, it was given up, it was given out to the number of people who came into Eretz Yisrael. But then those shares went back to their fathers and went distributed in the family equally among the fathers, the father and their brothers. So, uh, if you say it was divided up among the people who left Mitzrayim, and the Siv, therefore it makes sense that it says, the Siv, in other words, it was given among those who had more, meaning it was given among, it was given among, uh, divided up among the tribes who left Mitzrayim. The bigger tribes got more. There was the tribes who had, let's say, 100,000 people apiece or uh, 500,000 people apiece. No, you can't be that big. 100,000 people apiece, let's say, got a bigger share. The people who had 20,000, the tribes that had 20,000 got less, right? And you're looking at the whole situation of I mean, people who left Mitzrayim. If, they, if, they, if one tribe had 100,000 they got a, more. The one who got 20,000, 20,000, got less. Obviously, there were less people. That makes sense. El Amandom, at the top of Kofi Ches, El Amandom, El Boy Oritz, if you say it was given out to the among the people who came into Eretz Yisrael, my Lerav Tarba Nachlaso, what do you mean, the more? It was given among the people. If a million people came into Eretz Yisrael, each person got a share. What is the business? More and less. Everybody got, everybody got one share, period. No matter how, now they got their share in the tribal geographical area, but they all got one share. If you would say it was divided among all the people came to Eretz Yisrael, got a share. So what, what do you mean? The one who's more, the one who's less. Everybody got one share. It's obvious that the the, fan, the tribes that had more people got more and more shares. The ones got less, got less. If you're telling me it's divided among those who left Mitzrayim, oh, so that's already a Kiddush, that even though these people aren't here anymore, but you divide up on the land among the according to the size of the people left Mitzrayim. But according to one who says you give it up to people, according to Rabbi Yonah says it was divided among the people who came into into Israel. What do you need that for? It seems extra kasha. It's not a kasha. It's not a clear, not a clear answer. I'm going to buy another kasha that he had. Again, he's trying to prove like the like our Mishnah that it was divided up among those people left Mitzrayim. If you say it was divided among those Mitzrayim, I know the Katsafchan, but Oslofchan. I understand why Ben Oslofchan complained. Why did they complain? Because they said. As far as we know, we're not getting anything, right? We're just girls over here. 
And as far as we know, we didn't have the lucha yet that the there's no sons the girls get. So they complain, listen, our father left Mitzrayim. Our grandfather left Mitzrayim. Where's our shares of them? What happens to them, right? Their shares are gone. They had no Slavchad left. Okay, Hefer maybe had other grandchildren, but Slavchad had no boys. So Slavchad was entitled to a share because he left there. He left uh, Mitzrayim. Not only that, but he was entitled to a share of Hefer and a double share because he was poor. He was entitled to three shares. Now what's going to happen? They're going. They're going to be. They're going to be gone. They're going to just vanish, and uh, we're going to get nothing. So I understand. That's why I met. That's why they complain. Elamanda Merleboy Aretz. If you say they came in, that it was divided up, Eretz Yisrael was divided among those who came into Eretz Yisrael. Well, did Slavcha come into Eretz Yisrael? No. Did Chayfa come into Eretz Yisrael? No. So they're not entitled to anything. What's their complaint? What are you complaining about? What share are you talking about? If it's a if it's a share of the Otsim Mitzrayim, okay, yeah, you have a complaint. But if all the shares were only given to those who gave, came into Eretz Yisrael, so what's your, what are you talking about? He's not around. Slavcha wasn't here to take any Galishko. You know what they're talking about? Here's the problem. Even if you say it was right among those who came in Teretz Yisrael, and Slavcha didn't come in Teretz Yisrael, but Hefer, other had other children, other sons maybe, they came in Teretz Yisrael, right? Hefer, the grandfather, Slavcha had other brothers and their other children, and Slavcha, and those children maybe had children. Maybe they came in Teretz Yisrael. So what would happen when they came, they came in Teretz Yisrael? They all got shares. There might have been 20 cousins, whatever there were there. They got shares. What happens? It reverts back to the people who left Mitzrayim, like Hefer, and then they'd be entitled to it. That's how it works. Remember, that's what we said before, that it works It works in re its, re its reverse. It, it reverts back, and therefore the Yerusha is reversed, meaning that the dead people inherit from the live people. Yes, Slavcha didn't come into Eretz Yisrael, and he had no sons. And and uh, assuming that the, the boys don't, uh, assuming that girls don't get anything, Right, that they don't they don't get a, a direct share because there there are no brothers. They wouldn't get anything based on that, but they would get something based on their cousins because Hefer had other children besides Lafa. Those children maybe had children came in there, so they had a share, 10, 15, 20 shares. The shares would revert back to Hefer, who left who left Mitzrayim, who left Mitzrayim, and then. When, what, what happens when it comes to Hefer? Now it gets redistributed among Slavchad and his brothers, and they are Slavchad's daughters. So therefore, they're entitled, and that's their complaint. Why do they cry? Slavchad never came in. For reversion, when it goes back, because Hefer had other grandchildren, let's say, who left, who came into Mitzrayim, who came into Eretz Yisrael, they would get shares. Those shares, however many they were, would go back to Hefer, and then would be redistributed based on the number of Hefer's children. Let's say Tlafud was, was a core of four children, whatever it was, so he would get uh, two shares out, out of the five, and those should go down to well, Tlafud. That's the second sheet, the Rav Yonasen, right? If you say again, another question. So this was answerable, but the first one was really a better kasha. What's this Larav Lamat? Everybody got one share. Right? If you're dividing it among something that people aren't here, you could say, well, listen, the ones, the ones who had 100,000 people in the left Mitzrayim, they get a bigger share. They get a five times the share of the people who are the tribe only at 20,000. That's so that, that then makes sense. You give more to them, give less to them. But if it was divided among the people who came into Eretz Yisrael, what's the Kiddush? Lerav Lamah. Everybody got one share. Another Kash, Mishlam Mandam Mitzrayim. If you say it was divided among those people who left Mitzrayim, I knew the Kutsaf from Bnei Yosef. Now, Bnei Yosef actually. Slavcha was from the tribe of, of Yosef. But later on in Yoshua, we find that Bnei Yosef complained. Now, Bnei Yosef, Yosef's tribe, when they left Mitzrayim, was not that big. When they came into Eretz Yisrael, it was very big. It became, they, 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 they multiplied much quicker than the other some tribes. Some of them didn't come in, right? But I'm saying, but the ones who came in, they, they, when, they, when they came in, they were, a big, uh, they were a big family. So they cried and they said, listen, why should we get a regular share we're a lot more people than the other tribes. So if you say it was divided among Yosef and Mitzrayim, I had a good suffer from Yosef. Yosef complained. They said, listen, when we left Mitzrayim, let's say we were a smaller tribe. So we got, let's say, uh, you know, one twentieth of the whole thing. Now we're much bigger, right? Now we're much bigger. So it's not fair. And they complained. They said, listen, we, uh, we, uh, we need a lot more room for our cattle. We're a big family, et cetera. If you say it was about among those who came to Israel, 
My Katsafku, Kulushaku. What are they complaining about? All the people came to Eretz Yisrael, got a share. What are they complaining about? Oh, we, we got a small share because we were small when we left Mitzrayim. Uh, yeah, but uh, if the, the, uh, so what? If you were divided among those people who came to Eretz Yisrael, they all got shares. Everybody was funny. They complained because of the young children. Remember, whether you say it was divided among those who left Mitzrayim or among those who came into Eretz Yisrael, it was only divided among the people of ages of 20 to 50. What Yosef was complaining about is we got a lot of kids here. We got a lot of kids. We, we got fam big families and we got a lot of kids. They didn't get a share. Yes, it was divided among the people who came into Eretz Yisrael. But, but we didn't have, but there's a lot, we have too many children, much more children than the other families. Amr Abaya, Abaya says, Amr Abaya, Shema Mino, you see here from this discussion, there was no fam, there's no case of a family who didn't get anything. Everybody got something. Why? If you say there was one family or one person, one family who didn't get anything, he should have cried, he should have cried. Just like we find Baruch Stafford cried. And Ben Yosef cried about something. But as Stafford were answered in the affirmative, you're right, you are entitled to it. Ben Yosef were told, uh, sorry, you know, uh, uh, that, that's, that, those are the rules. So he says, it must be, if you find that there's one person who didn't get it, he should have cried. Maybe you say this, maybe they did cry. Maybe there were other people who cried. But the ones who cried out and they were satisfied, they got, uh, they were pleased, they got a positive answer, the Torah wrote them down, the ones who cried and didn't find uh, any re good resolution to their complaint, the person didn't say that. But Ben Yosef, but Yosef cried out and they they weren't, they didn't uh, get an affirmative answer to their problem. They, and and because when it's the Pasuk said them. So you see, it must be, so maybe it's not, maybe it's possible that there were other people who cried. You can't say the people who were who, who were written in the Pasuk uh, were uh, were uh, they were answered positively? They were listed, and the other people were not, right? And maybe the because But there were other people who also complained. But Ben Yosef complained, and they weren't answered. They weren't given any more shares after their complaint, and so we listed them. So it must be, it must be that there was no other complaints because the only two complaints were Ben Yosef and Ben Yosef, and the Torah doesn't list any other. Gemara says no, you can't prove anything from Ben Yosef. Because the truth is that he wouldn't have listed them except for one finish. Awesome. Eight Satova Kamashma, he's teaching us something. But the, the reason that they were mentioned was the truth is that there were no other people besides Slavchad and Ben Slavchad and Ben Yosef. The reason why Ben Yosef was mentioned and, and, and no other people were mentioned. The reason why they were mentioned, even though they got no, no, no positive answer, uh, because we listed everything. And, and therefore, uh, even the even the ones who didn't get a positive answer, and still we see that no one no one else is mentioned. So it must be that there were no other complaints. And Mars says no. It could be that there were other complaints, and it could be they weren't answered possibly, uh, but positively they weren't given a positive answer. But the reason why Ben Yosef was mentioned, even though they didn't get a positive answer, there could have been others. Why were they also mentioned? Awesome. Eight of Tavakamashman is teaching us a lesson about Ayin Hara. The boiler the initial storm yain bisha. A person should be careful from ayin hara. Ayin the kamal Yeshua. That's why Yeshua told them. They complained. They said, "Look, we got a lot of kids here. Where are we going to put everybody?" And Yeshua answered them. The sieve says, "Vayomal Yeshua." Yeshua told them, "Im am ravata. If you are great, if you are a lot of people, alei lechayar, go into the forest. Like you know, go to other places. Amalehu lechu bichabu asmacham. Go hide in the forest. Be arim in the forest. Shol tishet pochem ayin hara. That they that the ayin hara should not." Have any um, have any uh, control over you, right? Will not control you that you uh, that you won't have any any dominion over you. I'm going to answer them. Anonymous are the Yosef. We are from the children Yosef. The Loshal to be Ayin Harasha. The Ayin Hara does not uh, have any effect on us. The Chsid Ben Poros Yosef. Yosef is a fruitful child. Ben Poros, a fruitful child. Alayin, Alayin, who goes up by the fountain by the spring. Don't say who goes up by the spring. They are above the eye. They're supposed to be the, evil, the evil eye doesn't affect on them. That has no effect on them. This passage says, says, but the bracha that was given to when Yaakov gave the brachas to Yosef, it says, they will multiply like fish among the land. I'm just like fish. The water covers up the eye and show that the eye. The evil eye doesn't have any dominion on them. Afzaro shall Yosef also ain't I and shall let the spam. So there it could be 
that that whole parsha was only written to teach us the lesson that you got to be careful of Ayin Hara. That Yosef, they, Yosef complained, and Yeshua answered them, "I'll be be careful." Got a lot of people go hide because you will have an Ayin Hara, and they answered, you know, they answered, "Well, the Ayin Hara does no effect on the children of Yosef. It might affect everybody else, but that point is that's why the parsha was written to teach us that you have to be careful of Ayin Hara. But it could very well be that uh, that there were people who complained and got nothing. The people, let's say their father left, like I said, before the age of 20 and uh, left Mitzrayim. He didn't have a share. And when the kids came into Israel, even though the father died, the kids were also less than 20. So, they got a, so there could be people, there were people who got no share and they would have to find some other way of restitution. Again, if there were other family members, like the case of Slavchad, and you hold that you came into Israel and then it reverted back, maybe they could get a share. But the point was, as far as complaints go, you can't prove complaints from the fact that it was only Slavchad and Yosef, it could be that there were other people also who complained. All right, we'll pick them here tomorrow, Mr. Shem. Well, I do listen to everybody. Have a good day. I do listen to beautiful. Thank you.